Good evening, Doctor. Good evening, everyone. Hi, everyone. We will be starting with us. Uh, Alex, can we wait for another two, three minutes? More students no. will be joining. No problem. Uh, you have stopped the record. No, I don't. I don't think so. Why? Why should I do that? Um, that's Just what. Click on the record button. Okay. And record to the cloud. I will to show record to the cloud. One second, please. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Uh, share screen, record, record, stop recording, um, stop video. Uh, you are sure you want to stop recording? No, I, I don't think I have. It's like um, I have hit the record button because um, on my record, um, it's saying that recording. Are you sure you want to stop recording? No. No. Yeah, it's recording, so, recording. Yeah, it's recording. Fine. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it's recording. Okay. Hi, everyone. By meantime, you can keep your camera on. We have with us Mr. Alex. We can start. I think others will meanwhile join. Okay. Good evening to everyone. Salam alaikum. Good evening. Good evening, Doctor. Welcome, Salam. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I I welcome my I. I wel good evening. Uh, that, first, uh, it's better if you can be the expenditure list like this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, Suraya, your office noise is disturbing the session. Yeah. Good. 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 Um, I welcome my colleague, Shuraya Najib. She's our operations manager. Um, thank you, Shuraya, to join. Um, Okay, uh, first of all, I would like to thank the Learners uh, College University for inviting me to share with you a uh, view, few of my views, especially against for the last um, 25, 30 years, and which 18, of, 18 years I have been in the UAE and Middle East region, uh, working as trainer and advisor with the government and private entities. And it's my pleasure to, to share with you a few knowledge and experience and, and uh, what is going on in the region. Um, I'm trying, I will try to uh, share with you more of the industry sector experience rather than academia, because coming from, the, from different backgrounds, I have seen that uh, most of you are studying supply chain, global uh, management and leadership, luxury management, HR, finance, marketing, project management in general. So it's a quite diverse um, subjects, which I really enjoy. And um, this is not the first time for me to address students because 
Um, I have been doing it for many, many years uh, in UAE and GCC. And uh, so let us kick, let us kick the ball, etc. Um, what I will do, I will, um, I will share with you some logistics index, and then I will uh, tell you more about me, what, from where I'm coming, and then we go also for, with a case study. And at the end, we open up for the Q and A, and we share, we share uh, our experience all together, because as they say, information is power, right? Information is power. So one second, please. Um, yeah. No, 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 one second. Okay. Um, recently, um, one of the big players in the uh, logistics industry, uh, which is agility, have publish uh, the market, the emerging market logistics index, uh, which they do uh, periodically. Um, for time since Agility has started to publish this kind of index, uh, UAE have featured in the top 10 list of three individual sub indexes, which I will share with you. The jump in the, rank, in the rankings is a result of the country continue open financial sector. I'm talking about UAE. Transparent regulatory system, uh, corruption protection frameworks, and its progress towards comprehensive, especially towards the small medium development strategy. Gulf countries, Gulf countries outperform most of other emerging markets region in the 11 annual uh, agility index. This is the um, 11 and 12 one. A broad gauge of competitiveness based on logistics training, strength and business fundamentals. Um, in fact, uh, just uh, last year, to give you an example what I'm talking about, about the, the, uh, uh, the growth and the investment that Gulf countries are doing in this sector, especially UAE and Saudi Arabia. Um, last year, um, the Minister for Logistics, Ministry for Transportation, Ministry for Transportation and Infrastructure, Ministry, one second, please. Ministry for Transportation and Infrastructure in Saudi Arabia. They have changed the, the, the title of the minister and they, they have renamed the department and the ministry. And now it's called Ministry for Transport, Transportation and Logistics, and Logistics Services. And what they have done just a few months ago, because we were part of it, they have set up the first uh, national logistics um, reform and strategy, and they have also set up the, the first uh, Saudi Logistics Academy. This is to show you that things are moving. Coming back to the agility uh, index, uh, business friendly condition and core strength position of several Gulf countries uh, near the top index. Um, we, have to, we, give, we have to give weight to China, because China always remain number one, even in the ports. India is number two, uh, alongside with Southeast Asia countries. And number three, uh, etc. cetera. Um, Saudi Arabia has result in the sixth place. Qatar has come on the seventh place. Oman have placed on the 14th place. Bahrain on the 15th, on the 19th, okay? Um, Southeast, in, uh, Southeast Asia countries such as Indonesia are FK fourth, Malaysia five, Thailand ninth, and Vietnam number 11. So that we all know when we have to endorse that there is also a huge investment going on in Southeast Asia. The Gulf countries and nations continue to diverse uh, 
making steady progress in streamlining regulation and realizing increased digital capabilities. The entire region is growing and the outlook continue to be healthy as we enter into new and into new decade. Um, <clears throat> the, the, uh, the, the index is, is uh, taken and completed by almost 800 professionals where they reveal the overall performance about their companies and sectors they work in. And, and with 64%, almost 65, 70% saying that the global recession is likely and only 12% saying that the recession is unlikely. Anyway, downward pressure on global trade volumes, uncertainty growth prospects and going trade between US and China are driving this belief. Um, uh, the index, the index ranks 50 countries by factors that make them attractive to logistics providers, freight forwarders, shipping lines, air cargo, and distributors. The top 10 are China, UAE, Indonesia, Malaysia, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Mexico, Thailand, Turkey, and China. Um, uh, China, India, and Mexico are top for the international logistics. And UAE, Malaysia, and Saudi Arabia have the best business fundamentals. I think most of you, like, uh, like me and like you, who have been in the UAE for many, many years, we all know that in the last uh, 20, 25 years, UAE have invested heavily, heavily in the infrastructure of the logistics, in the in the of logistics, I will share something about you about this. Also in the technology and now in the uh, digitalization in the financial sectors, because when when you have when you have um, when you have business who wants to invest in a specific country, they must first find stability, okay, um, uh, political stability. Uh, financial structures, highly educated people, etc., etc., and all these are well established in UAE. Okay, so um, that is a bit of introduction uh, about the situation of the agility logistics. Um, I, I, I would, I would lay after this meeting, I will share with you uh, by email a, a bit of writing about this, about this. Um, uh, um, index. So um, you will get an insight of, of agility, which they publish every year. So you can know the trends, what is happening in the logistics sector. Okay, that's, that gives you a bit of that gives you a bit of understanding and overview where where UA is 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 now and where is, where, is, where is heading in terms of logistics, because that will give you a peace of mind and security, especially for you. Those of you who are maybe uh, looking for a job or in a job and want to find an, a better job because looking for, for better opportunities is, some, is something uh, ongoing um, always. So that gives you a bit of index. I have taken that index of the big players uh, of the industry, okay? Um, nowadays, the academia and the universities Sorry, the academia and the industry works very, uh, hand in hand in many countries, not only in UAE, but across the globe. Before, before it wasn't like this, but for the last 25 years, 30 years, um, academia recognized that it cannot work on its own. It has to work hand in hand with the industry and sector, because at the end of the day, the, the, the students on the undergraduate and postgraduate who finish their studies, they have to go in the sector, in the, in the different positions. They're going to be leaders of tomorrow. So they have to work, the academy have to work hand in hand um, with, 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 with the sector. Uh, many universities, especially in UK and in many countries, um, uh, even in UAE, they, 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 they have established like a R&D unit in the universities and colleges. The scope of the the scope of the R and D is to work hand in hand with the sector. For example, I have spent a couple of years working with Birmingham City University, 
um, just this is just a case study where that money will go in the investment that money will go into the investment of the same university for the students. Uh, so it's not for profit, it's research and for development. And, I, and we that, lost you in between, we lost you in between. I, I was saying, I was saying that many university, they invest heavily in the R&D with the scope that they give the opportunity to the undergraduate and postgraduate students to work on a specific projects as part of their thesis. And, and then after they finish the, the, their, their uh, courses, their programs, they can find a job straight away for in their respective field and sector. And this is good because at nowadays, there is a continuous approach between um, academia and uh, industry across the globe because um, um, you have to, you have to, uh, you have to train people for tomorrow. I, I have seen, I have been in the training industry for 25 years ac across many countries in Europe, south of Europe, Southeast Asia, Gulf region, across the Gulf region, etc. And North Africa. And I have seen a change, drastic change. I have seen a drastic change uh, in the way uh, the, the academia is organizing the curriculum. Where before, where before the, the curriculum of the postgraduate diplomas, postgrad, undergraduate and postgraduate was very traditional. The last few years they have changed completely. They, they, the curriculum of many colleges and universities for the last 10, 15 years, or maybe 20, I can say, that it now but, it's more... Now it's more oriented, now it's more oriented and it's more geared up for the sector and industry. So even even part of the even, even part of the even part of the courses and programs to sort of visit uh, uh, specific companies, specific sectors, and build up their thesis on case on real case studies. Okay, they work out with different industries, and they will they will report back uh, the findings and outcomes. And this is very good because that that will pave the way for that will pave the way for 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 them for the future. That has also put pressure on the same academic and lecturing and training staff because now you can't people people who have been lecture like me or like many of, of many of us, you can't rely on traditional education and training. You have to you have to keep yourself on the edge because you will find yourself, this is the trick of the trade. You will find yourself in front of 15, 20, 50 people lecturing. And suddenly you discover that, that the student is not them, but it's you because the students are much more advanced than, than the lecturer. So the 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 the, uh, the advanced technology and progress that have been that we have witnessed in the last um, uh, in the last 20, almost 20 25 years have put a lot of pressure on the academic and lecturing and training people because you have to keep updated you have to do a lot of research you have to keep yourself on the edge and uh, every day is a new day there is what you have what you have done yesterday it's done. It's good, but you, every day is a new day, and you have to come up with new ideas, new knowledge, sharing, research, keep yourself updated, etc. So the world is changing. The world has been uh, changing, evolving, and you, we, there is no way we have, can't look back. We have to keep looking forward. We have to keep on searching, research, and evolving with the progress that is going on around us. Because the, no one can keep, no one can hold the progress, right? No one can keep the, the progress. So that's 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 the situation of 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 uh, of my introduction. So I'm talking just to recap what I have said in my introduction. We have seen the index of agility, which I will share with you later. The progress of the logistics, especially in the Gulf region, which is very positive. Okay. There is always the ups and downs in every sector, always, but it's keep on moving. 
and uh, and uh, and also we are talking about the training and education which is so fast we, especially with the introduction of uh, 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 ICT, information communication and technology, we, ca we, ca we can't look back. So that's my introduction about the, the, the sector of the logistics and the academic. Okay, um, I will, uh, I, I don't know, uh, I, maybe I will take uh, questions maybe halfway through or la later in the end, don't worry. Uh, I'm here to, to stay with you as long as much you want. Um, who is Alex Borch? Okay, Alex Borch, I am a bottom-up approach person. I did not, uh, um, I have started my career like most of you from down in a warehouse as a store officer. And, um, and every day I used to analyze what I'm doing and how to take decisions better. Work smarter as we say, right? Don't work hard, Mark, work smarter. And this kind of approach have helped me and I used to do also self-appraisal. And this kind of approach have helped me to climb the stairs step by step, step by step. There was no wasta, believe me. That was step by step, um, slowly and steady, and following the sites. Okay, we make mistakes like everyone do, but you have to go step by step and follow. And, uh, you know, um, it, uh, from a store officer, I, I found myself uh, assistant purchasing a store supervisor. Um, then, then I found myself as assistant purchasing officer. I've, I ranked up to purchasing manager, um, up to stores and purchasing, logistics and operations, logistics manager, logistics director, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So, so uh, on a span of 15 to 20 years, Okay, I have gone through all these step-by-step um, uh, -step progress and um, following every day what I'm doing, following the how can I do better. And obviously throughout the years, I, was, uh, I have worked with different uh, uh, industries, but always at the back of house. I have changed jobs, but always at the back of house where I have specialized my background. Um, um, when you go when you go up step by step, and you follow uh, what is going around you, you will monitor a lot of things, because when you go fast, um, sometimes we lose the sight of quality. But when you go step by step, you can't lose you can't lose opportunities, because opportunities sometimes come few or come many, but you can't lose opportunities. But my suggestion would be always to go step by step, uh, take the necessary information and education while you're doing your job and, and, and take the opportunities, but go slow and steady. So you can monitor the situation around you, improve yourself and upgrade yourself as well, okay? And, and see what is going on around you. Participate in the environment that you are in, search for information, etc., and try to be better every day. And this is what's me. Until I left uh, in, uh, in 2000, and I am from the south of Europe. So um, <clears throat> I'm coming from the south of Europe, which the mentality is a bit different from the north of Europe. The north of Europe is very strict, very well organized, very standardized. In fact, the south of Europe is total, totally different. Where in the south of Europe, we are very Mediterranean. Um, we like the food, we like the wine, we like the sea, and we like to sometimes cut corners. I was lucky that my father, my dad, was in the, was in the Navy. So at home, we were always high, sir. We have to follow rules and standards, and there was no room for cutting corners. That's how I am. Uh, if you ask my colleague Shuraya, she can tell you more about that. So sometimes I'm, I'm very hard on that. But my background was that. And OK, there was very hard times in my childhood. But when I look back, I say the way, the, the, the reason I became a logistician by profession, um, I, feel, I feel I'm a natural logistician because that's the, way, that's the way I am. I am very systematic. I am very planning guy. And I follow a lot. 
and uh, and uh, and one of the reasons that makes a good logistician and good planner and good organizer is that you have to be uh, self-disciplined with yourself. You have you have to be self-disciplined. We make mistakes. We are humans. We all make mistakes all the time. But you have to be self-disciplined self -discipline as well. And uh, <clears throat> and uh, after in uh, in 1994, in 1994, I joined a local government institution. And that's and by beginning of '95, I started my my part-time career in in education. Then in '90, in uh, I started to join from one institution. I joined other institutions, and in uh, 2000, 2000 and to, in 2000, I moved to Libya. I spent two years uh, in Libya with the oil companies with Zwetina Oil, where I was doing uh, helping them and the train is to have Filipino guys and guys from Libya, where I used to train them, mix them up socially, um, professionally wise. Then in 2002, um, I moved to Tunisia. And then in 2003, I moved to UAE on invitation of a private training institution in Abu Dhabi. And suddenly um, I found myself in a new, uh, in a new, um, how do you say, new, it has changed my life. I became in love with UAE, with Dubai, like many, like many of us. And uh, I started to work not only with one institution, but with around six, seven of them, in mostly in Abu Dhabi and Dubai. I found myself providing training to Adnoc, uh, different upcoasts of Adnoc, like Gasco, Takir, etc., Adma, um, etc. And I have taken also, it was a two-way experience not also given by taking as well. Again, while I was developing training, I was learning a lot. It was learning lifelong, it's a lifelong learning. And you learn from everything, from everyone and from every city. And, um, and in 2000 and, uh, and 2007, I was called by a, a British institution, which is a global, the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport, which is a global institution. And I was called to take over the, the responsibility of UAE, which I did with my colleague Shuraya. And we didn't have anything, just, uh, just a, a name, but we found out that we found out that the sponsor of, of we were very lucky that the sponsor behind the, that British institution was the uh, Sheikh Ahmed bin Said Al Maktoum, the chairman of Emirates. So I have taken the opportunity by that because um, uh, you know it's not uh, it's very uh, it's very it doesn't happen every day right to find a sponsor uh, the His Highness Sheikh Ahmed. So um, I have spent almost one year negotiating with Emirates. Emirates uh, Emirates Group is not an it's not an easy organization to negotiate. Believe me, it took me months and months. But after a lot of negotiations and persuasion. I have managed to, they gave me an office, um, myself and my colleague, they gave us an office at the Emirates Aviation College Block B, opposite the Irish village. And it was, uh, uh, it was a, a wonderful experience because we started a branch and we grow very fast. There was, a, the, there was an opportunity. UAE, UAE uh, was, uh, was growing as well, et cetera, et cetera. And we had a very, very, we have spent six, I have spent six years there where uh, we had the, uh, we, we, we had a lot of achievements. Uh, from nothing, we, we managed to attract 700 members, one, three batches of diploma programs per year and one batch of advanced diploma per year. Plus we used to organize a number of events. Uh, the auditorium of the aviation college hosts around 410 people. And we used to fill it up with not less than 250, 300 people every event, which was very good. We won a lot of awards as well. Apart from doing this, we were, we, I, I, I vented out to open branches across the region, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, Oman, Kuwait, uh, et cetera, et cetera, Abu Dhabi. So it was a fantastic uh, experience. And also I, I have done some work on a ad hoc basis with the government, et cetera. Uh, Alex? Uh, sorry yes. to interrupt. Can we show that PowerPoint as well? Y yes, yes, I can do that. I need to do it from my side, right? 
Yeah, yeah. You can directly share screen and select okay. that. Is that is it's online now? All right. Yes. Yes. Okay. 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 So so uh, yeah so okay so this is me right um so that was my experience um nowadays to nowadays to just finalize what i'm talking because normally i don't like to talk most many too much about me because the past is the past and you can find everything on linkedin and um, nowadays i'm after you know um Nowadays, um, the last two years, I have joined another institution. It's called the Institute of Supply Chain Management in UK, which is based in Newcastle. And last year, we have uh, opened and registered a branch in UAE. And we have, again, registered a number of branches across the region, a number of training organizations. We have almost 12 across the region. And I'm very with thanks to my colleague and my team, etc. cetera. And, uh, and we, we are involved now in a number of projects, uh, especially in Saudi Arabia, in Dubai, uh, uh, in, uh, in Jordan, etc., etc., etc. So, so that is that that is that is that is uh, something about me. So, I mean, I can I can I can talk a lot, but the scope of this presentation is not about to talk about me. The scope is to more to share knowledge, what is going on and the the logistics sector where we are now and where we are going etc etc um uh, next slide which i would like to share with you is adopt for the for new norm for the future recently uh, forbes said that the 75 uh, most of the companies that are doing that are doing traditional business okay M most probably Either they have to change, or they will they will disappear from what they are doing, because because um, uh, there is a new trend which is coming in. Fifty percent of future company is still not started, because there is still a lot of R and D in the area which is told. Two billion uh, job going to disappear by 2030 from coal power, uh, traditional transportation, repair, etc. 85% of the jobs in 2030 is still not born. Education is and skill set not that decided by Michael Dell. Adopt, the, adopt, the, adopt technology, understand customer, final, um, final touch, networking, is types of, uh, these are the three types of, 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 of people. Highly qualified by auction, a uh, little bit of everything, Okay, or well, the coffee your own. There are three types of mentality which I describe: the hunter, the planter, and the farmer. And I think you know what I'm trying to say about these three types of mentality, right? There are those people who try to looking for opportunities to hunt. There are the ones who try. Uh, is it stuck? Is everyone there? Yes, yes. we cannot hear him. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I think uh, Mr. Alex is. I think some yeah. network issues, I think. Yeah, yeah. I will wait for some time. Uh, he's there. He's coming. He's there. He's there. Uh, he's there. He's there. Okay. Okay. Are... Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, we, we lost yes, you for a while. We yes. lost you. Now it's fine. Okay, okay. I said there are three types of there are three types of there are three types of people. The ones that are always looking for jobs and they want to hunt. The ones to, who are who want to plant something. Maybe they try to how do I say? Maybe um, plant something is that maybe you have an idea, and there are the money and uh, there are the people who have the money but not have the knowledge. You can have the people have the knowledge, but not have the money. So you can have something and you want to maybe plant it with someone, right? And uh, together with visibility, you want to start something. The third, there are those ones who, who want to start something from scratch, like SMEs. 
Um, it's very challenging. Uh, I know I know the feeling of a farmer because I started many things in my life from scratch. Um, but it's very such. But when you do it, and when when you do it, the satisfaction is is very high. Okay, it's very high. Um, these are few risk, few industry risk, which um, um, I believe um, through COVID have gone on to uh, risk. We have the jewelry, the shipping is on the risk, textile, metals, auto, aviation, seafood, real estate, and hotels. I think if you if you look the last 2020 and 2021. Okay, these type of sectors were, were suffering a lot. We're talking about commodity, talking about the shipping industries, we're talking about the auto, the aviation suffered a lot, uh, real estate, because people were not, you know, uh, at, and hotels as well. Then on the medium, we have the media, okay, which, etc., the paper industry, the pharma, oil and gas and uh, chemicals as well, and banks, okay? And then the low risk was the FMCG, the fast moving consumable goods, because people were obviously, they some of us were spent months and months uh, home following the rules of the Ministry of Health. So the food industry was moving a lot. The IT services were moving very well because people uh, was inside and so, so they had time to use their computers, etc., and their devices, and education. It was a very good opportunity that people were studying online from home, etc. So these are the three uh, sectors that throughout th th the three categories, which I have categorized in three, okay, in the last two years, 2020, 2021, okay? Uh, what, is the, the, what is the new norm to be considered? Recruitment and uh, promotion is based on knowledge, skills, and competences. So definitely uh, you, are, you are studying. There are some of you who maybe are, are studying, maybe they are students and they are entering into the new industry. And some of you have been in industry and start to study. So um, knowledge is power and skills and competences is going to be crucial for everyone, okay? There isn't a job for life. Job for life is finished. You have to reskill yourself, upskill yourself all the time, and you have to be multi-skilling. So to keep yourself updated on with, with education and research, it's a must. High level of investment in training and training of employees at work, this is very important. To keep companies must, uh, must uh, Nowadays, across the across the industry, must invest on their employees because, especially with the technology that is happening, and it's, for example, if you look at the logistics industry, who is who is moving the agenda in the logistics industry? It's the not it's the it's the it's the technology. Technology is moving the agenda, and the whether whatever is between B to B, whatever it's B to C, or or uh, between um, uh, one party and the other, between, I mean, the trading partners, buyer, supplier, supplier, buyer and supplier, and uh, supplier and client. High level of teamwork and team culture is required because uh, culture is, teamwork and culture is very important across the board uh, in different levels. Development of multi skills of employees is very important. The understanding, okay, uh, especially for open minded, uh, sharing knowledge, keep ourselves updated, to, better communication of ma managers and employees for better working relationship, okay. Commitment to quality, this is very important. Um, I will explain, I will explain myself about quality, quality of product and quality of service. And I give you an example on this. If you look at Jabal Ali, Jabal Ali is full of uh, 4PL logistics. 4PL is like, for, we, those of you maybe who don't know what is 4 or 3 or 4PL, uh, the traditional is 3PL, third part logistics, and the new and the, the updated is the 4PL. 
the third, third part logistics is a freight forwarder, which, and the freight forwarder offer a lot of services. They offer warehouse services, they offer transport services. Some of them, they, they, they also take care of, your, of, of the purchasing. They offer a lot of, they offer a lot of, they offer a lot of the services. Now, these companies, if you go to Jabal Ali and you go to gate two of Jafsa or gate three of Jafsa or gate four of Jafsa, you see a lot of warehouses there, right? Across Jafsa, around Jabal Ali. We are talking about Jafsa because Jafsa is the number one in, in Dubai, right? Yes. But we have a lot of free zones across the region, not only Jafsa. We have, a, we have a lot of free zones and industrial parks across the UAE and GCC. Um, these companies are in competition with, e with each other, are in competition with each other. And, um, uh, and, uh, and the one who's going to offer the, qu the quality and value added most probably will take the job. Some, they study each other and they offer the same costings and services. So the one who offered the quality and value serve the, the quality the added service most probably will offer will take the job. So creation and organizations, status symbols, organizations, etc. These are very important. I mean, I mean, uh, stimulation of initiatives and suggestions of employees. This is also another important factor. Okay, another important factor. Okay. Okay. Now, and uh, the other, this, uh, this is something very important as well. Skills requirements do not vary significantly, but company size or region, which suggests that supply chain employees can move between region, between region and some degree of ease. Employers indicate that some that communication and analytical skills are a requirement for all occupation categories across sub functions required include technology so these are the the, the next 10 uh, 10 skills are um, are very important financial planning okay very important nowadays especially in top executives forecasting cost analysis knowledge and information hello can you share the screen sir uh, it's not on? No, no. Something has happened. It is not on since you uh, join again. Okay, one second. I don't know what is happening. It's on now? Yes, it's okay. Yes. Okay, 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 okay. So um, I was talking about these ten fundamental skills that uh, people needs to people need to look at is the financial planning, which is very important, uh, the forecast, uh, cost analysis, knowledge of international business, general management and business, regulating knowledge and negotiating skills uh, for manage for quality knowledge of current market, market trends and business implications, emerging uh, emphasis on process, process and change management skills, employee, employee engagement, and finally training and career development. Let me take you, let me take you through, let me take you through the first one, financial planning. Why financial planning? Because nowadays cost and services are must. And people with a bit of basic financial is very important. It will help you a lot in, in what you're trying to plan and what you're trying to do, etc. Everything is cost, right? I mean, there's no need for me to emphasize on this. Each one of you knows that every step that we take, there is a cost uh, attributed to it. So a bit of financial planning is required. Forecasting, also another important uh, factor. Cost analysis in what we in what we do before we do in the planning etc. Knowledge of international uh, business, both regional and global. This is important. General management practices and business, business ethics, especially business ethics, are very important. Uh, regulatory knowledge and negotiation skills. You need to know the the uh, regulations framework in 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 the country in the region especially if you are doing business uh, in B2B or B2C, okay? 
uh, knowledge of current uh, market trends, etc., and business implications, what is happening around you and uh, in the region or global. Uh, emerging emerging uh, countries em emphasize on process and uh, change management as well. Okay, um, uh, employment employee engagement uh, with the, with with the management, especially of culture, culture change, etc. And the last one, which is something ongoing, is that the training and career development that each one of us, each one of you, each one of us have to keep on going doing. It's an, it's we can't stop doing it. Okay, we can we can't. Um, and this is the uh, something which I have designed. So we're talking about job analysis, right? We're looking at job analysis. You plan, you extract, you select, business introduction, career development, training. You come to professionalism. You go. You talk. You you progress towards progress. Maybe you you there is a termination of a job. You have to keep motivated. You have to come with a new job. Okay, you, you have to use your creativity, you perform and you assess, identify um, leadership and potential and information. This is something which I have created with my friend and, and, it's, and I think if you look at it, uh, it's, real, it's a real life situation because we, uh, we, we start a course, we look at the job, we plan, we extract, we select, we introduce, there is a career development in what we are doing. We keep on taking training. Then we, we go to next level by becoming more professional. We move in our life through progress. Maybe we, we look for second job in our life. Okay. We have to keep motivated. Okay. We go into a new, we, we new air of our life. So we have to come with motivation and creativity. Sorry. We have to come with creativity. We have to perform and assess ourselves. I, okay, then we became we 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 become mature. So we start to look at leadership uh, potentiality, and we look always for information. Okay, that's the situation of life. New changes to to adopt in our thinking. Okay, sorry to adopt in our thinking. Um, first, world has changed for every social forever. Which, which is it's called the social distance. We have to adopt, and we have to do. We ha we have to adopt for changes, okay. And we ha and we have to be survive, okay. Um, recently, I was reading uh, uh, from a general uh, from a general uh, uh, publication that millions of people um, uh, they have lost they have lost their jobs gone, okay. So, so uh, we all know that through COVID, we all know that through COVID, many people have lost their job. Okay, so we have to keep motivated and creative. We can't look back. We have to be a bit of entrepreneur, you know, in, in, in a sense that we have to be a bit of the entrepreneur because we have to come up with new skills, etc. We have to correct our ego, be more natural. We have to, we have to keep healthy in what we are doing. Okay. Change we need to make, riding the wave, okay? Starting growing your influence, acquire new skills for digital age, start building multiply steam of income. Uh, we, we start uh, co-work space vis-a-vis -vis office and expect the unexpected. We have to expect the unexpected because as I said earlier, uh, there is a lot of progress. There is a lot of things that are happening, etc., etc. Trendsetter industry. Um, the on the bright potential. There is a <clears throat> e-based business. There is a lot of e-commerce digitalization business that uh, is going on. You know, so there is a lot of um, e-based business that um, is has started, especially in the last uh, 10 years. E-commerce is going into new era. The e-learning is growing a lot. E-meeting is growing a lot, especially the last two years. The e-freight forwarding as well. And also the e-logistics is going as well. 
on the startup industry, there is a lot of innovation that is coming up, especially the service of the B2C. Uh, we have a lot of fintech and blockchain. Okay, there is a lot of uh, last mile delivery service. We have seen a lot of, especially this line of industry. We we have seen a lot of food industry, um, uh, and uh, also a broad game center incubator. And last one. There is a lot of uh, outsourcing and talent connect. So uh, this is growing a lot on, on the site. Okay, the big changes. Rule number one, what you need to consider. Adopt, uh, you have to adapt to these new changes and the fast and evolving world that is happening around us. Adjust instead, you have to adjust, you have to adjust instead of waiting and watch. Uh, assumptions are to be built, okay? Customer ask for discount or, the, uh, or deduction. Delay in payment expected. Expansion to be reevaluated. Time and technology. Doubtful debt. Do we need to do this business? Maybe SWOT analysis of your entire business we need to look at. Is customer, uh, is customer can manage without you? Mm -hmm. Know your customer, mind mapping. You need to map your situation, okay? So as a last, um, life is unpredictable and you never know what is, what is coming next. Don't ever get too comfortable, always be ready. That is, that is always my rule. Educate and hang and evolve changes the name of the game. Let us face the challenge as a team. Okay, etc., etc., etc. I think that is uh, what I have prepared for you for today. I don't know if I can, if I can uh, take maybe questions. Hello? Yes, please, everyone. If anyone have any questions, please. A golden opportunity. We don't get Mr. Alex every time. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I, I have one question. Uh, supply chain and logistics is the same thing, or is it something different? Uh, uh, okay, logistics is the first. Uh, is the, Logistics is a word for log, uh, logistician. A logistician is coming from a French word, logistician. It's a person who coordinates things. It's coming from the military back um, many years ago. Okay. Um, um, logistics, we, we, we had first we had transport, transportation. Then the word the logistics have emerged, especially from the army. And in the recent years, like maybe I, I would say, 1990, the word supply chain start to emerge. Supply chain is an integration of the whole process, right? Okay, that, okay. that's so nowadays everyone is talking about supply chain rather. If you look at if you look at the news, if you look at BBC, Sky News, and many news, Al Jazeera, and many of them, nowadays they are talking about supply chain disturbance. What is happening, you know, because of COVID, yes. high, high, high cost of high cost of shipping. Yes. delays in supermarkets or food, etc. So it's more of a integration of the components. So. Okay. So this is, we are very into in supply chain rather yes, than logistics. Yes, okay. yes, yes, okay, yes, yes, that's it's more. What is going to be tomorrow? I don't know, who knows? Maybe yeah. they, they, they will find another word for instead of a new version of supply chain, who knows? But up to now it's a supply, more of a supply chain. So it will be same remaining like uh, suppliers and then focus company and then customer. This is actually the supply chain. So this is always the remain or yes, something will yes. change in no, the future. No. The, the main work, the traditional, the trading partners are always going to be the same between the three of them. We're talking about B2B, sub, oh. uh, supply, buyer and supplier, and then supplier to customer, the B2C. The, those are always going to be the same. What is and happening, what is happening what is happening is not the fundamental platform. What is happening is the um, the way of doing things. 
in terms of movement of goods, financial uh, terms, and uh, technology. What is changing? Okay. Yeah, but Thank but the know. trade but the remain the same. It's the way of doing business is changing. The way of doing business. Thank you, doctor. It makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Um, I, I would like to, uh, I have seen a lot of students from the list that Dr. Sharon have shared with me that most of you are studying supply chain. So maybe you can share with, with me and with all of us, what do you think about the supply chain? What is happening? What do you think about now? And maybe you're thinking about the future. Dr. Sharon. Yeah, yes. Can I you guess maybe a, can you a, maybe can you uh, maybe you, you have shared that video as well now? Are you going to play it now? Um the link I have gave you. Um yeah. I, but I have only oh, I had I am trying to because I do okay. Yes, I'm here. Um I don't know if I can put it because I have only the YouTube. I have only the YouTube um, uh, link, no? Link. Yes. Yeah, can, right. Can you, can you maybe, how yeah, can I can. Me? I can. Yes. Can I play? Yes, please go ahead. Okay, okay. I will share, play with that first. Mm -hmm. Can everyone see my screen? Yes, doctor. Yes. Sound. Yes, there is no sound coming. Now? Yes, yes.
good grammar and spelling. Thank you. Um, yes, there is more so many information in this uh, PDT video. Yes, yes. Uh, just, yeah, to give, which... just to give you a bit of brief, um, the Institute of Supply Chain. Um, yeah, was... I have. What is the last part of military chain and military? Yes, yes, yes. What, what, what was that? Because in, in England, the Institute, the head office is based in Newcastle in England, and we have around five five branches which cater for the global. In England, they work hand in hand with the MOD and the and Minister of Health (MOH) especially with the NHS. With the Minister of Defense, we work with the military, a lot with the military. I told you logistics started in the military. So they work a lot with the military. People in, in, in many countries, they do around 23, 25 years of service between Army, Navy, and uh, Army, Navy, and uh, what you call it? Army, Navy, and uh, Army, Navy, and Air Force. Army, Navy, and Air Force, right? Air, air Road, and, and Sea. Army, Army Road. And the after niche, in the in the same military, there is a big concept of logistics. So, so as part of the staff development program, the institute work hand in hand with the with the with the enhancement of skills with the Ministry of Defense. And also after they finish, after they finish the military service after 20, 25 years, they and they go in the private sector, they also train them to come on the commercial work. That's that's the reason why they work. With the ministry, or with the ministry of, with the military, with the military. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, doctor. Okay, okay, okay. Um, the Institute of Supply Chain. At the moment, we have a branch in Dubai, and uh, we are working with a number of, with a number of uh, potential training providers in, uh, in the Gulf region, university colleges, etc. And the scope is to support them with different, uh, with different education standards, best practice publications, etc. The good thing about our institute um, is that most of our staff in England are at the age are less than 30, High, uh, graduate from universities and college, and they come out of innovation and creativity in uh, what they do. And that's that's a very really value added, something which I really enjoy working with them. My responsibility with my team, with my colleagues, is the it is to develop the region, which we are doing. Um, we have a couple of projects at the moment, and also um, we are in discussions with your institution, Dr. Sharon and the team, to, to start collaborating with your college as well in the, in the near future. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if I can take, uh, maybe there is any more um, people who would ask or exchange views about the supply chain and logistics in UAE, etc., or in the Gulf region, or in India, I don't know. I am happy to listen or to share. What do you mean by e-logistics? E-logistics is the way things are things are moving uh, and and happening. Um, e is for uh, e-commerce, right? Like commerce. Yes. E before we had, before we had commerce and then we had e-commerce and now we have logistics and now we have logistics is the technology that. Is the technology that's driving the logistics, right? As we as, as we said, mm -hmm. that's what I mean. Okay. Mm -hmm. E-logistic basically handled by like Amazon, which is online uh, handling no, no, logistics. Not necessarily. There is a lot of players who handle the, the There is a lot of players who handle the e-logistics. Not only right. Amazon. Amazon is a one key one key big player in the world, right? Who has set up a standard? Who has set up a standard, which most of us look at as a benchmark? But there is a lot of there is a lot of players in the industry um, that set up a lot of uh, e-logistics. Um, yeah. Amazon is one of them, definitely, definitely. And uh, like definitely. in China, is Alibaba kind of this? Well done. Yes, 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 yes. yes. At the at the end of the day, you know what is happening. At the end of the day, if a, if, a, if a big player like Amazon set up set a standard for logistics or for supply chain, it will follow. The others will follow. And they will come up with a new version of things and they call it another different uh, version or different word. That is yeah. what's happening, right? right. Um, like many other competitions like Samsung and uh, what do you call it, the other mobile, in the, like the iPhone, right? IPhone, Samsung. Yeah. 
Siphone, iPhone, and, and Samsung, they are always in competition. They come with different yeah. versions. Even so, in UA, we can say Huawei is now these days our competition, <laughs> giving that in Samsung and competition with the Huawei. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think the bottom line is, as I as I repeated in my presentation, it's the way you you adapt, the way you think fast, you think quality wise, and and the way you you bring out innovation and creativity in the service and in the product that you are trying to provide. That's yeah. the whole issue. You have to be fast. You have to be uh, you have to be adaptable, and you have to bring change, and you have to be fast. That's the whole secret about it. That's the whole secret. Yes, yes, you're right. Um, 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 if you look at the history of, if you look at, if you look at, if you look at 1970s and 80s, there was a lot of business, but uh, I have witnessed that time. Um, um, but from 1990s onwards, from 1990 onwards, the world have have continuously changed. Because there was the, the in 1990 there was the there was the era of technology. That's the, when the technology started. The 1990 it it took it took it took so so fast. There was a lot of things happening even before 1990. I'm not saying that there was nothing, but the technology took fast. In the, yes. the 19 uh, investment in the infrastructure investment in technology, investment in the soft and the hardcore, so many things, so many things. Things gone fast and they are going faster. So we can't look back. Um, uh, um, even the way, for example, uh, banks, when you look at the financial sector, banks, banks are changing everything, you know, especially with, uh, with FinTech and, and uh, with fintech, uh, with with blockchain and with artificial intelligence, yes. they are changing so fast, you know. And um, especially data, data is everything. Data is everything, and artificial intelligence is making that data uh, is facilitated data. Data is everything in everything. Data, mm -hmm. data of everything, data of everything, data of customers, the financial data, um, so many data. So artificial intelligence is 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 the is the tool now to to control and keep that data, everything you know, etc. etc. Uh, anyone else would have would like to ask something or share their views with us? Yeah, I guess, Mr. Alex, thank you so much. I guess all their queries are being, you know, maybe one more reason is that, you know, this is the first time we all are hearing uh, more about logistics, you know, someone who has that's seen it. the era of 90s and now 20s, you know, that's totally, uh, you have built a bridge between both these eras and coming with your experience, it's first time that we are seeing having a speaker who has both the ends experience. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and uh, I hope everyone agree with this, you know. Exactly, we exactly, get... Doctor. Because no? we are very new to logistic field, but yes, it's a bridge between the, these two things. Yeah, it's very, very changes now these days in supply chains. It's not the earlier one now, it's very change in the, uh, as per the market situation. And you know what the best part with Mr. Alex is he has seen both the era, the 90s yes. and the 20s, you know. Someone right. as he was uh, saying us from that uh, farmer, planter, hunter. So he is that way. He has come from actually scratch. And I, I'm maybe I'm wrong. I'm correct, Alex. You know, in that you know. And uh, this is what we wanted. Even uh, I know many of you are from different backgrounds, not belonging to logistics. But Alex has actually opened our eyes and shared us some uh, great insights about Alex uh, about logistics industries in UAE and throughout um with this message and i hope uh, you all enjoyed this session yes uh, yes. to know yes, more definitely uh, especially me because i am in the uh, uh, food distribution company so we are very into in logistics and supply chain so it's really helped me to this session to understand the actual logistic and supply chains
Although I'm not working in the logistic, but yes, I understand the business. Yeah, and I have this Omka Pepsi is as good from which industries are you? Sorry? Onka Betse, uh, one of another student. She's also from some industry. Uh, I hope, I guess we had a conversation last time. Are you there? Yes, I'm here I'm from the financial services industry. Yeah, so she was last time, I think we were into this discussion on cryptocurrencies. And mm -hmm. as he pointed out, like logistics, you know, the banking industries to everyone is like fast moving and uh, good to have everyone here with mix and like you know coming from finance and other industries so yeah please anyone else could like to share their opinion or their feedback yeah. i think if you look at the expo 21 a good example of logistics right now which all of you are, yeah. have seen is the expo 2020 right that is a great level of logistics great level. yes Completely without, right. without good logistics, it can't happen from yeah. years back. Yeah, it's you, really it's, helped logistics. That's why yes, we are yes. now doing in 2021 that uh, expo. Otherwise, it's really hard to you know explore the again. This one happened. Yes, yes. You you have so much of 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 to be able to organize the expo. There was so much movement of people and goods. And now after these stands were set up. You have a lot of movement of people moving from one point to another, organizing, organizing the flow of people, the organizing the, the transport between exactly. all parties. Oh my God, that's, that's And huge. I'm good too about that girl food also now going this coming Sunday, they will start. So it's also happening this year. So mm -hmm, good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so I, I was lucky to be at Expo in, in mid, -feb, mid December with my colleague and we have in, on one day, we have walked so so much miles. I never. It has been years that I did not. <laughs> I did not walk so much miles. You know. Oh my God. We walk so. The area is so huge. The area is so huge. Very well organized. Very well organized. Yeah. So so so. Bottom line: logistics goes in everything. In everything. In everything we do. Sometimes we are doing it and we don't know that we are doing it. Yeah. You know? it actually, this is the pillar of the business: mm -hmm. logistics and supply chain. Mm -hmm. Without that, we cannot uh, even think how to run our business. So if it is smooth and uh, going well, then only can business will success. Otherwise, logistic, it's actually the pillar of the business. One second, please. Hear it? Sorry. Um, also, you say the finance and cost also matter. Okay, let me share with you a small story. When 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 I was when I was doing my studies in England, uh, in the north part of England, in Carlisle, you have Newcastle and Carlisle, then you have the Scotland of Scotland. There was there um, there um, one of the, my my the lecturer have asked me a simple question, very simple one. He told me, Alex, in your experience, who is the best storekeeper? I said, myself, because I've been in the stores for many years. No, 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 no. He said, your mother. My mother. Yeah. I was surprised to tell me why. You know why? Because in the old days, in the old days, maybe you remember as well, uh, maybe our father, our parents used to have a lot of children, right? Not like now. When you, when you get married nowadays, you may be maximum two, two kids, two yeah. kids maximum. Before they used to have seven, nine, eight, six. Two. So it, it was hard for the parents. Uh, and, and those days, the woman would not work. It's only the father. So the father, the, the dad, used to bring his salary and give it to his wife. And his wife, with a virtual of patience, she managed to bring, to put, all food for all keep them keep them tidy organized and clean and sometimes if one of the kids maybe sometimes one of the kids ask for something extra because he needs to go out with some friends she will manage to give him also something extra to go out that's a good logistics yes you know so so it was it was we call it university of life because our mother 
was so natural. Uh, it our our moms were so natural that they used yeah. to keep everything organized, everything organized yeah. in a very with limited resources, very limited resources. So okay. so, so that was fantastic concept. Yes. Yeah, so it's so true. I was speechless, and that gave and that have gave me a lesson to shut my mouth and listen rather than speak. You know, to listen more yeah. rather than speak. So that is true. That is true. Um, I I will leave you with a joke now because I want to leave you with a smile. Okay, I will give you a joke. Okay, just I want to share a joke. I will leave you with a smile. Yes. So okay, there was a guy from Japan. You know the Japanese people are always with a camera, right? Yeah. Always wherever you see them in Dubai, wherever you see them in UK, always with a camera. Always. This guy, this guy have arrived from uh, Japan, first time in Dubai, Terminal 3 with, uh, Terminal 3 with Emirates. And you know, he, he showed for a taxi, so he taxi came for him and he told him to take him to Kempiski, Hotel Kempiski, Mall of Emirates, right? Yes. So how much it takes from airport Terminal 3 to Kempiski with maybe 15, 20 minutes, maybe, yeah. right? Sort of. So this guy was very excited to see Dubai first time, eh? especially Sheikh Zayed Road. And he, he sat at the he sat at the back seat. There was a there was a Pakistani guy driving uh, the taxi, or, okay. And you know he was at the back taking photos from one side to another, from one hotel to another, the side on the time, you know. <laughs> Suddenly he saw a Mitsubishi car uh, in Sheikh Zayed Road driving by local guys, you know, sometimes they, they drive very fast. We know that. And he was taking photos and he was tapping on the, on the shoulder of the driver. Look, 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 it's a Mitsubishi from Japan, very fast. I know, I know my friend, the driver was there. I know, I know, sir, I know, I know. Yeah. Suddenly he saw another, another, another uh, Honda. Vroom. Look, 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 from Japan, very fast. I know, sir, I know, I know. The driver was getting crazy because, you know, drivers see all these things all the time, you know, they, they have 12 hour shift in Dubai. Suddenly a motor with Kawasaki. Oh my God. Look, 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 look. I know, sir, very fast, I know. And the driver was driving. Suddenly, suddenly they arrive at the Kampiski Hotel and the driver put the, lug the luggage out of the car, so. And he, the, the, the Japanese guy told him, how much? Oh, my friend, 150 dirhams. Oh, very expensive. I know, sir. The meter reader is from Japan and it's very fast. <laughs> oh my God, it's, it's a truly <laughs> The taxi reader, the taxi meter reader is from Japan and it's very fast. Yes. Very fast, yes. So he's managing very nicely the reply. <laughs> It's it's technology, right? It's technology. Yes, yes doctor. Thank you very much. It was Thank my pleasure uh, to spend some time with you. I hope Thank to have you. the opportunity to meet you maybe face to face in the college. That's my okay. objective for uh, to meet. And I wish you all well. And uh, I will share with Dr. Sharin the presentation. Maybe she can share with you as well. God bless sure, you. Doctor. Thank you so much, Doctor. It was Thank really you. really Thank nice you. class. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. As I came, I Bye, just everyone. Bye, everyone. Because I came Bye. from nursing background. Sharin, thank you so much. Someone is saying something. Sorry, I didn't hear. Yeah. Nursing background. It's me, Dr. Sharin Kavita. Hi, Kavita. I saw you wave hand. Alex, she was yeah. the one to wave hand while you were giving the mother example. Uh, as Tell I came me. from nursing Sorry. background, I really don't know. In, I don't have not have any idea about this logistic and supply chain. But uh, Mr. Alex, really thank you. You gave a nice session, amazing session. Now I do understand what is the supply chain and logistic. And thank you very much, Dr. Sharon, for giving opportunity like this to attend sessions. Really. No, no, it surely and, will be there at every the yeah. opportunity will come at your doorstep. <laughs> Just you be available. <laughs> yeah, that's what I joined in MBA because I know only the nursing part. I don't know anything out of that. <laughs> So I just want to explore other aspects of uh, organization also. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah, thank you, Alex. And I think they have 
the students have said what they want to. Thank you so much, Thank Alex. You. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank, you, Thank you, Dr. Sari. Thank you, Dr. Sari. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone, and a happy weekend. Bye -bye. Uh, same to you, everyone. Bye.